Hi, I'm Carrie. Welcome back to my channel. Today is part two of exploring this beloved dead oracle. And really what I'm going to show you today are different ways that I use the oracle and some spreads that I came up with um, while playing around with this. I didn't really talk about the guidebook in my previous video. Um, and in case you didn't watch that quick walkthrough, uh, I'll try to link it in the description box below. But I'm gonna touch really quickly on the uh, spreads that are in the back of this book, because I don't think I mentioned them, at least I don't recall mentioning them. Anyway, I think there's about three or four spreads back here. Your general three card reading, and then there's one called the evidential spread, which is a good spirit communication. Uh, these cards will help you identify the energy by describing personality traits, events, memories that directly resonate with a specific soul. The evidential spread is also for divining insight into any um, anonymous spirit activity that you might be experiencing. So this is exactly what I said, that this deck would be really great for spirit communication. Again, I didn't read through the guidebook before I had done the very quick walkthrough of it. Um, I was just going by the images and keywords off of it. And then there's a big, uh, and it talks about that and it gives you ideas of what to do to communicate and so on. And then there's the big beloved dead spread which is like a tongue twister. To and this goes into a bunch of different things and then you can break it down and compare cards. I mean, it's really interesting. I have not uh, fully done that one yet. I was just trying to work with this on my own and figure out, you know, um, what uses this Oracle has besides just spirit communication, besides just um, exploring the depths of our ancestors and uh, relationships with ancestors and so on. So in the other video, I talked briefly about, I'm just gonna try to fix these real quick because I mixed them up a little bit. I talked briefly about this would be really good to explore uh, relationships and I did just that with it. I, I came up with a couple spreads where I was just exploring the dynamic of uh, to a relationship between two people and where I was exploring the communication style between a couple people and so on. And that's what I'm going to show you real quickly here today. So the very first spread I did, which I can't remember if this was the one I showed in the first video, was if you're having like a communication breakdown with another person. And of course this can be used with a tarot or whatever, but I really wanted to showcase just using this oracle for these type of spreads to uh, show you how versatile this um, oracle really is. So let's just say I am having a communication breakdown between me and a boss. So I would say, you know, what is the main communication style that is happening between me and my boss right now? So let's just focus on that. Oh, isn't it funny that the card that came out is communication. Okay, so, but they have boxing gloves on. So obviously we're not communicating well, where neither one of us are understanding where the other person is coming from. I don't wanna hear their point of view. And obviously they sure as heck don't wanna hear mine. So then I would say, well, you know, what is my communication style with this person? And the prophecy card came out. I maybe am coming to the table thinking that I know it all already. I already know what he's going to say or they are going to say. I already know, you know, um, how this scenario is going to go. And so I'm not being open to hearing what the other person has to say. And how is my boss coming to the table um, in a communication? So with the personality card here, and again, I'm not going to the guidebook for any of this. I just want to show how easy these cards are to read without 
the guidebook entries and just going off a of face value and um, intuitively from the, the words. So if I saw this personality card here, I would see this as that my boss is kind of larger than life and that they um, really have a good sense of themselves, but I may see them as arrogant because of that with this personality here that maybe I feel that they think that they know it all, but it's really not, that's not the case. It's just, they're very sure of themselves because, you know, they know what they're doing or whatever. And, but I see it as being like boastful. That's how I would, um, take this card. So then I, the next question, this is just a quick four card reading is what is the compromise needed for us to be able to communicate with each other better? And I'm going to take this one. Okay, so this is an active love card and it's a BU. So what I would say in this scenario is I don't have to give up who I am and, and maybe I can see into the future and, and can see <clears throat> possibilities of, of what's coming down the road where maybe my boss can't. And I don't necessarily need to give that up, but I also need to come at it with a uh, from a place of compassion and understanding and be open to hearing, you know, uh, what their viewpoint is. This was the other card that was kind of stuck with it. And it's the here and now. I need to be more present and not thinking that I know what's going to happen in the future and what he's going to say and just be present and hear his advice or hear his point of view on maybe how I could better do my job or, you know, streamline something or whatever the issue is between the two of us. So this is a really good, sorry for that beeping. That was my oven. <laughs> and this is a really good, um, Oracle to use to flush out some communication problems in a relationship. So the next relationship spread that I played around with using this Oracle was uh, basically testing out their relationship energy. Let's use two people. We'll use um, the name Eric and Mel. And, you know, maybe Eric comes to me and he wants to know uh, would a relationship with Mel be a good one? So let's just say they're not in a relationship yet. So would a relationship with Mel um, be good for him. So let's see what we have. So a possible energy to that relationship is again, the here and now this card loves to come out of the deck for me. Every single reading I do. Um, well, one of the things I would tell Eric about uh, exploring a relationship with Mel is he needs to make sure that he stays, you know, in the present and doesn't bring his past baggage with him and doesn't uh, focus on whatever had gone wrong in his previous relationships and that he needs to take this relationship at face value and not measure her up to you know, um, what happened to him before. So where is his energy in regards to a relationship with Mel? And we're at peace. And what's her energy in regards to a relationship with Eric? Oh, and we have religion. Okay. So I would say that he is ready. He is at a point that he is ready to move forward with her, that he feels that this is um, a good fit for him and that he thinks that they could, you know, be really harmonious together. Now, in her, her side of it, as what is her energy in regards to her relationship with Eric, is she wants something that's traditional. She doesn't want an open relationship. She doesn't want anything that is outside of the realms of tradition. She wants a relationship also, I would say with this, that helps boost her or supports her um, on some sort of spiritual level. You could 
even strip this all the way back that she only wants to pursue a person who has the same religious beliefs as her. I mean, you could take it all the way down to being literal as far as what this means, where maybe with this peace um, card over here, Eric's energy is more free flowing. It's more open. It's more, you know, what comes comes and he's good with that and, and so on. And she is more structured and, you know, wanting, like I said, tradition and what a marriage is supposed to be in a traditional sense from a, even a religious standpoint. I mean, you could strip it all the way back to that. So then the next question is, how does Eric see Mel? So we have purpose and I would take this because like I said, this card, like um, it, I think in the guidebook, it focuses on like the life purpose, you know, what your life for seeking your life purpose and that. So I would say as far as how Eric sees Mel is that he sees her as a pivotal point or a pivotal role, not point, a pivotal role in his life that, you know, it is going to make a, um, a big impact on his life. She will make a big impact on his life. So how does Mel see Eric? Uh, so we have the personality card. So Eric or Mel sees Eric that he has this big personality that maybe he's fun to be around that he, you know, is a, a good time and, that she, you know, maybe she likes that kind of energy. She likes someone to be sure of themselves and, you know, to really know um, what they want. So then you could ask, you know, what would a relationship look like between Eric and Mel? Um, and we have promise. So you could see this a couple ways that it's promising that a relationship would look promising between the two of them, that they would be committed to one another, that they would make that promise to each other to be in that, you know, committed, uh, type relationship. So this is how you could use this Oracle to, you know, work through those, um, relationships. So then I played around, I need to get my little notes over here, exploring karma. I have a relationship in my life that has a little bit of a constant turmoil to it. And um, even though, you know, things are pleasant and, you know, um, we're able to communicate well with each other. There's sometimes there's like this, you know, underlying current of turmoil or, or a little bit of chaos in the relationship. So that's what made me create this spread because I really wanted to see if there was some kind of karmic debt that was, um, you know, brought forward from a past life that we had another life together with one another and that maybe in this lifetime we are working through something uh, together. So I created this spread for that. So then, so let's, um, so I'm going to show you how to work out that. So if you're having any sort of issues or you want to know if there's a karmic debt um, that you have with someone that's in your life that if you believe in past lives, I know not everybody does, um, but if that's something that you believe in, then um, you can use this for that also. So my first question is, what is my karmic debt between me and, you know, so-and-so? So what is my karmic debt between me? Or you can even, even if it's someone who's passed, you could do it for that. You know, what was my karmic debt between me and, you know, so-and-so? I would take this service card as we, it was a lesson of self-sacrifice. It was a lesson of kind of um, stepping back and 
trying to learn and understand where that other person was coming from, from a place of compassion, but also the, the self-sacrifice of it where, you know, we gave so much of ourselves that we might have lost ourselves in the mix because it was solely focused on the needs and the wants of that other person. So uh, maybe it was, if, if that was our karmic debt to one another, that we needed to learn to put our own wants and needs aside and give in and and help that other person along their journey a little bit more and maybe not focus on ourselves. Uh, so what debt was, what karma was resolved between me and this other person? Self-preservation. Isn't that perfect to go along with service? Um, so the karma that was resolved was that we did learn how to step out of that and to take care of our needs whenever we needed to. And to maybe not let someone run all over top of us and <clears throat> to take care of our own uh, person. Um, so then the next question was that I came up with was what is currently being worked on between us? What is currently being worked on between us is defense. And this is telling me that we need, I need to learn to, um, we both need to learn to take our walls down and to not be so short with each other all the time and to see each other's you know, point of view and to realize that, you know, we're not out to get them, that we we're, we're trying to help them in some way, but not at the sacrifice of ourselves in the process. We shouldn't have to sacrifice ourselves in order to, um, to help or guide them or, or do what they need, you know, and, and to not be so defensive with that. And then the last question what is lesson will be finally learned from this karmic debt. The lesson will be to learn not to be a martyr, to do things from a place of compassion, not from a place of wanting something in return, not from a stubborn place of, oh no, I can handle it on my own when what you're really wanting is someone to come in and rescue you. So I really loved um, this karmic debt spread that I came up with because it I did it with several relationships in my life and it really showed me a lot of things. Um, so again, so it's if, if you believe in the karma, karmic debt stuff, um, coming over, bleeding over from a past life. So your first question is, what is your karmic debt between you and so-and-so? Then your second question is, has any karmic debt been resolved between the two of us? Um, what is currently being worked on? What lesson is currently being worked on between me and this person? And then what is the lesson that will arise from, um, what is being worked on? So this is a great one. If you do try this one, please let me know because I would love to know. And you could use this, like I said, with tarot. I'm just, again, trying to show you the versatility of this oracle. So those are the few readings or three readings that I wanted to show you that you could do with this beloved dead oracle um, that really can help you dive into some relationship dynamics, like I said, or even explore karma, karmic debt or things like that, if that's something that you believe in between you and another person. Um, if you have been working with this beloved dead oracle, let me know how you're using it. Are you using it just for spirit communication? Are you using it 
to look into something more on the ancestral realm. Uh, I would love to hear uh, what you are doing with this oracle and um, how it's fitting into your practice. Thanks so much for hanging out with me today. I really appreciate you being here. And if you like my video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. It helps my channel grow here. And don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more videos from me. So until I see you next time, bye.